Sup guys, welcome to the unofficial patch notes for the 28th of June 2017. Grass is provided by Mike Tindy over on the War Thunder Reddit. So this morning they dropped a patch for War Thunder. It was completely unannounced. They haven't said what it is, but it was about 150 megabytes. So for you keen-eyed observers who noticed that, this is the breakdown for, yes, well, basically today's patch. Let's start first with ships, where they've added a lock shooting distance control, which appears to be the ability to lock your distance you want to fire while ability having the ability to adjust the direction. So basically, if you know a destroyer or something is like 700 meters out, you can basically hit this button, and then you've fixed your guns at 700 meters out, but you can still aim and follow it, you know, try, uh, t um, follow its drift, so you can actually accurately hit it without having to worry about your shots going slightly high or slightly low. So once you bang on, you're set. Secondly, the Fletcher class destroyers files have all been added to the game. So expect an imminent test, I'm guessing, because Fletcher's coming. All destroyers' main guns now have a speed dispersion stat, which is all currently set at 0 0.005, which is a small amount of RNG of the speed of the rounds to make destroyers slightly more inaccurate. This is probably going to be a good change. It, I don't know if it's realistic or not, but when I did the last most recent test where they gave it the option for the destroyer, if you saw a torpedo boat, that guy went up like a fucking Chinese fireworks factory. He just explodes. And then, of course, even when they're traveling packs, all you need to do is connect one shot and it's like a Death Star explosion. The next change relates to torpedoes relating both to air and sea. They have been given a start propulsion delay set to... For all torpedoes currently 0.1 seconds. This is most likely so it doesn't instantly start accelerating when they hit the water. So it's just to stop a torpedo immediately starting to accelerate. So you have a slightly better window to maneuver out of the way. Also ship spawns have been set. Uh, when you spawn in a ship you're always going to be set to 50% for rottle going forwards. And the final thing is it appears there's going to be a test of assault on the ice fields map. And uh, that's all the changes to ships. Moving on to air. Bailing out in an exit zone in ground forces battles in an aircraft now only takes 1.5 seconds. I'm assuming that either relates to when you're on the airfield wanting to, you know, change your arm or whatever, you can get out of your tank, your plane a lot easier. Or it's if you're playing in arcade, you can J out quicker. I'm not particularly sure, but I'm going to go with it the arcade one. But I don't really play arcade, so I haven't really got a clue how this is going to affect it other than you're more able to quickly get back into the battle. The next change is voice messages uh, is to the UI, in which voice messages are now unavailable in all free-for-all game modes. This is a good change. It basically stops you and like ten of your friends queuing, then like three or four of you getting into a game, and then you just you know collaborating to wipe out the enemies, then rig the game in your favor. So this is an all-around good change in my opinion. Moving on to new 3D decorations, they've added decorations for streamers. Currently they're in Russian, so I'm assuming these are in-house, but um. Unique little decal there, like, the, for the super testers for World of Warships. They've also added the signs belonging to the road sign contest, you know, a cave, the, you know, the thing that happened, I think it was a month ago. So there's, there's three new signs, they're probably going to be available to buy. And finally, we have Battle Royale, where they've added a new Battle Royale map, the Abandoned Factory. And, uh, if you, it's basically, they've added another map for rotation for Battle Royale, so I'm assuming they're going to try and make it to be a mode, you know, a free-for-all. I'm not particularly a fan of it, because I prefer to have, like, one or two mates having me back. But, um, if you're up for, you know, basically free-for-all deathmatch, uh, it seems they're quite, uh, you know, determined to push it. So, the main changes today were to the ships. They've added a bunch of shit for the upcoming naval test. A few minor changes to the UI to balance it, and some more decorations. That's it. You like what you see here? Like, comment, do all that good stuff down below. Keep on gaming, and have a good one.